rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah Ladi Yujibuni Hina Unadi. Wayasturu Aleya Kulla Auratin wa Ana Aksi. Wayuadimu Nehmata Aleya Fala Ujazi. Nahmeduhu Wanu Sabihuhu Wanu Kaddisu. Ala Alaihi Wana Amaih. Wanashadu Allah Ilaha Illa Allah. Wahdahu La Sharikala. Ilahan. واحدا احدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربوبيه ونقر له بالعبوديه من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والشهداء والصالحين والصديقين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين وصحابته المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ووضع الكتاب ووضع الكتاب فترى المجرمين مشفقين مما فيه ويقولون يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا صدق الله العلي العظيم In continuation of our discussion about the hereafter and the events that we're going to encounter in life after death, we spoke in the previous session about the day of judgment and the process of judgment, al-hisab. How that is happening is, is going to happen. And we mentioned that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is going to execute this process of judgment himself. Allah says in the Quran, Inna ilayna iyabahum, thumma inna alayna hisabahum. To us they are going to come. To me they are going to come on the day of judgment. And it is upon me the judgment. I'm going to take care of the judgment. I'm going to be the judge. I am the supreme court on that day. There is no other court behind him. There is no other judge or prosecutor beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then also we read in the Quran that People, when they arrive there, they're going to be told by angels, اقرأ كتابك كفى بنفسك اليوم عليك حسيبا. Read your record yourself. You're going to judge yourself on that day. You don't need someone to judge you and tell you where to go. Once you read your record, what you did, صحيفة الأعمال, of your achievements, of your deeds, whether they are good or bad, then you're going to realize what direction you have to take on that day, whether you go to the right or the left. But this is parallel to Allah's judgment because Allah is ordering the man to judge himself. It comes with his help, with the help of Allah, with the guidance of Allah, with the order of Allah. 
There is no other power there or entity that rivals Allah's judgment on that day. Whether the person himself is going to realize where he should go, or the angels are going to, uh, to tell him, it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is Malik Yawm deen the owner, the supreme, the sovereign, and the judge of the day of judgment. So definitely Allah is going to take care of the process of judgment. Then after that, the next question comes. On that day, the grand day of judgment. يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Ibrahim السلام, the patriarch, one of his wishes and his prayers. رَبِّ اخْفِرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيَّ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْحِسَابِ He was thinking ahead. He was thinking to that about that day, the grand day of judgment. And he sought forgiveness and pardon from his Lord, not only for himself, himself, his parents, وَلِوَالِدَيَّ His mother and father, and وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ The community of the believers. On the day of judgment. What are the questions that they are going to ask us? Do we have an idea about that? Now here when some of us and you went to the citizenship exam. Before we came the good citizens of this land and this country. There is a booklet that tells you these are the typical hundred questions. They are going to ask you about the founding fathers of America, about the current president, you know. Few, the governor probably of your state. These are the questions that you're going to face. What are the questions that Allah is going to ask us on the Day of Judgment? Do we have a booklet? Do we have something, a guide to tell us, focus on these questions and prepare the answers? Do we have? Yes, we do. It is mentioned in the Quran. It is mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf. Allah says, وَوَضِعَ الْكِتَابِ The record, kitab here means the record, our final record, is being placed before us. فَتَرَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ The sinful, مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ They are afraid, terrified, of what is going to be read in their record. Of what is going to be found in their record. فَتَرَى الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ Then after that they say, وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا Woe to us! مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ What sort of record, meticulous and exact record is, لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا that this record and this book did not leave neither a small deed nor a big one, but it was recorded in it. Allah says they're going to find everything they did presented before them. Nothing is missing. This book is such a thorough and accurate and meticulous book that is not going to miss any deed, any of our deeds that we committed in this life. وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا Allah says everything we did is going to be presented to us on that day. We see it. The incarnation of our sins. The embodiment of our sins. وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا But then Allah gives assurance to us. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا Your Lord is not going to treat people with Injustice is not unjust to anyone. Allah is not going, do not worry. If you have safe record, then you should be happy. Therefore, we're going to be asked about everything. Nothing will be missing. No small thing, neither a big thing is going to be missing from our record on that day. So prepare yourself. Not only a hundred typical questions, Hundred billion 
questions we are going to be asked on that day. In Surah An-Nahl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَتُسْأَلُنَّ عَمَّا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ You're going to be asked and interrogated and questioned about everything you did in this life. وَلَتُسْأَلُنَّ لَامْ لَامُ الْقَسَمْ نُون نُون التوكيد. The Quran uses two methods here. In the beginning, لَامْ وَلَتُسْأَلُنَّ this is for, for the vow. When Allah wants to make a vow, He brings the lamb. Let us alunna. Noon at the end. Let us alunna ends with noon for emphasis that we know what we are talking about. Noon at tawqeed. Let us alunna yawma idin. Let us alunna amma kuntum ta'amalun. In Surah Al Zilzila, it has Zilzila Al Ard Zilzalaha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that says, يَوْمَئِذٍ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا On such a day, the day of judgment, people are going to proceed before their lords in groups, distinguished groups, أَشْتَات, categorized groups. We are not all together. No, we are in groups. يَوْمَئِذٍ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ so we can see our a'mal, our deeds are presented right before our eyes. And they will show them to us. The record is visible. We're going to see our record before our eyes. لِيُرَوْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ And then after that, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى Whether you have done an atom weight of goodness, it's going to show and, on the other hand, if you have done something evil, even with the size of an atom, also is going to present itself. You're going to see it on that day. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wassalam, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wassalam, says, Ibad Allah, the servants of Allah, Ittaqullah, fear your Lord and consider your Lord. اتقوا الله في عباده وبلاده. Consider your Allah. When you treat the people, consider Allah. When you treat the land, also consider Allah. The way you deal with the environment and with people. Be very considerate. اتقوا الله. فإنكم مسؤولون حتى عن البقاع والبهائم. On the day of judgment, they're going to ask you not only about yourself. Not about what you did to your wife and to your son and to your neighbor and to your co-worker. But also you're going to be asked about the land, the soil that you lived on. The land, the environment, the place that you lived in. You're going to be asked, how did you treat your house? How did you treat this piece of land that belonged to you or you rented probably from someone else? You're going to be asked about that. والبهائم. You're going to be asked about the beasts. If you have pet at home and you mistreat this pet. You think this is an animal. Animal has no soul. Animal is going to perish. Animal is not being resurrected on the day of judgment. Some people mis mistreat animals in some cultures. Maybe in this culture. Thinking that this is not something that God is going to add. This is called animal or beast or cattle. Amir al muminin says, Allah is going to ask you even about your treatment to the animals, to the pet that you have at home, whether you mistreated it or you treated it well. Hatta an al wal Let alone about how you treat human beings. Nowadays, in some countries, and fortunately they call themselves Islamic countries, especially in the Persian Gulf area. They are mistreating the servants. Millions of people come from Bangladesh, from Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka, other countries, and they work there out of necessity, out of hunger and desperation. They, they take up a job there. The other day, a woman from the sub-Indian sub continent was treated very badly, the owner of the house or her master or the one that she was working in his house in the land of Haramain, 
the holiest place on the earth. Jaziratul Arab, he pierced her bodies 50 times with nails, with nails. He pierced her body. He was torturing her. And she was sent back home. Every day we read a story. The mistreatment, the inhumane treatment of human beings in these countries. Why? Because this is a servant. He doesn't have a lawyer to defend him. He doesn't have a government. He doesn't have someone strong to defend him. So let me mistreat him. Let me treat him worse than animals. They live in subhuman conditions. Today, you, sometimes you go to these countries, you go to Dubai, and Dubai is greater than New York and Hong Kong today. But look behind the scenes. Do not look at the skyscrapers there, tall buildings. Look at the conditions of the Indian workers, builders they live in. Subhuman conditions. Subhuman conditions. 40 people, according to the NPR a report, they said 40 people were crammed in one room. 40. 40 in one room. Allah says, we will going to ask you about this. Not only about your treatment to human beings, about your treatment to animals. We're going to ask you. You are accountable. You are responsible. You are responsible for everything you did. And this life is short-lived. We're going to stand. Inna yawm al-fasl, Allah says. On that day, that day is very eminent. That day is very close. Inna yawm al-fasl kana miqata. Here in this life, some people cannot afford to hire an attorney. He cannot afford even to petition to the court. He will keep silent. But Allah would not keep silent about that. And Allah would not forget. Allah says that day, the day of determination, the final day, in yawm al-fasl. We give our verdict. And no one has the right to object our verdict. On that day we stand before Allah. Who is the judge? The judge is very smart, very wise. The judge, you cannot bribe him. Here you may bribe, you can get away. Another example of an Afghani merchant who was tortured in these Gulf states. I don't know whether you followed that in the news or not. He was a partner to one of the sheikhs in the Emirates. And because of some misunderstanding, he was sent to the desert and they started putting dust into his mouth. And then the prince, the prince, he ran him over with his vehicle. You can see the, the movie, the, the, the film, the clip on YouTube. Allah says, we're going to ask you about that. Here you have the government in your control. Nobody can, even if, if the international media, if a human rights organizations are going to say something, you're going to deny that because you have the power and you have the money. But on that day, Allah says, Inna yawm al kana miqat. On that day, we are stripped of our powers. In fact, on that day, we are also stripped of our voice. Allah says, we... Make them stand there. They cannot even voice themselves. Let alone object. They cannot. And then. There are certain verses in the Quran. That speaks about. Certain deeds that we are going to be asked about them specifically. There will be some emphasis and some stress. Over certain deeds and behaviors of us in this life. Allah says, we're going to ask you generally about everything. But certain issues, we will focus on them more. The Quran says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ In Surah Al-Takathur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَلَّا لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عِلْمَ الْيَقِينَ لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمِ ثُمَّ لَتَرَوَنَّهَا عَيْنَ الْيَقِينَ ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ You're going to be asked about everything, plus we're going to ask you about the na'im. What is the na'im? The na'im has been interpreted by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his grandson, Al-Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. Na'im... The literal meaning of Naim is joy, is happiness. 
is a blessing. Some interpreters who diverted from the school of Ahlul Bayt, they say God is going to ask us about the food. Today you, you go for lunch, you eat chalo kebab, you know. God is going to ask you about what type of chalo kebab. Was it sultani? Was it, you know, ordinary? This is what they say in tafsir. But this is not the question. Allah is not going to ask you about the type of food that you ate. No. Allah is going to ask you about something more important. Allah, the Prophet says, Allah is going to ask us about the spiritual food, not the physical food. And the Prophet says, Allah is generous. Allah is more generous than the person who invites you to his house and then he provides you with food. Is it appropriate for that person to come and ask you at the end of lunch or dinner, what did you eat, how much you eat? He would not ask you. It's not proper for him. He's a generous person. He invited you. He wanted you to eat. Allah is more gen- Allah provided us with this food. So he's not going to ask us how much did you eat or what type of food you ate. The food is the spiritual food. The Prophet says Allah is going to ask you about me, Rasulullah, and the Quran and the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How did you handle them? Allah has given you these blessings, these outstanding and exceptional blessings in this universe. How did you handle the Prophet? How did you treat him? How did you treat the Quran? How did you treat the family of the Prophet, the successors to the Prophet after him? Did you treat them well or you neglected them? You abandoned them. Which one? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, أنا أول قادم على الله تعالى يوم القيامة. The first one to arrive in the mahshar on the day of judgment in that huge arena is me. أنا أول قادم. The first one to arrive. ثم يقدم علي كتاب الله. After that, immediately after me comes the book of Allah, the Holy Quran. ثم after the Holy Quran يقدم علي أهل بيتي. My progeny, my family, they're going to follow. They're going to arrive on that day. ثم after my family, when they arrive, ثم تقدم علي أمتي. My nation, my ummah are going to come. In sequence. First the Prophet, the Quran, the Itra, the family of the Prophet, and then after him, the ummah of the Prophet, his nation. فيقفون. We stand, فيسألهم الله تعالى عن كتابي وعن أهل بيتي. On that day, Allah is going to ask my nation, how did you treat these two? How did you treat my book, the Holy Quran, and the family of the Prophet? And the Quran says in Surah Al-Zukhruf, وَإِنَّهُ لَذِكْرٌ لَكَ وَلِقَوْمِكَ فَسَوْفَ تُسْأَلُونَ Surah Al-Zukhruf, Allah says this book, He says to the Prophet, this book, dhikr, reminder. This is a wake-up call, reminder. For you and your community, therefore, your community is going to be asked about this book on the Day of Judgment. Our treatment to this book. We are called Muslims. Muslims. But in some Muslim homes, this book is missing. Even the physical book, let alone the spiritual one. Let alone the meaning and the teachings. Even the physical book is missing from some homes. The blueprint for a humanity is missing. You can find any type of magazine, newspaper, literature, book, you know. But when it comes to the Quran, the Quran is missing. Definitely we're going to be asked about this before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says about certain people who divided the book. They accepted part of it and they rejected the other part. Allah says about them, كما أنزلنا على المقتسمين سورة الحجر كما أنزلنا على المقتسمين مقتسمين are the dividers how did they divide what did they divide the Quran كما أنزلنا على المقتسمين الذين جعلوا القرآن عظيم they divided the Quran they accepted what suits them what is easy for them they will say it's okay but the one that is a little bit more challenging they rejected they rejected it Many things we reject in the Qur'an. It's found in the Qur'an. But I reject it. Because it doesn't suit me. When it comes to zakat, 
I might pray, but I would not pay zakat because it doesn't suit me. Praying is easy, but zakat is not easy. Or sometimes, sometimes, zakat is easy, everything is easy, but hijab is difficult. So we accept everything, we agree with it, with the exception of hijab. Allah says those people divided the book. الَّذِينَ جَعَلُوا الْقُرْآنَ عَظِينَ He says we're going to ask them about this on the Day of Judgment. About this mistreatment of the book of Allah. فَوَلَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ فَوَرَبِّكَ لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ عَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ We're going to ask them about this division dichotomy. When they treated the Qur'an with double standards. Whatever suits them, they respect it. Whatever it's a bit challenging and difficult, they throw it away. We're going to ask them about it on the Day of Judgment. And we will continue, inshallah, on the subject of life after death and the hereafter in the upcoming weeks, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal-Asr inna al-insana lafi khusrin illa ladina amanu wa amanu al-salihat. وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهم السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب صدق الله العلي العظيم Our minds are always preoccupied with certain concerns and sometimes fears, anxieties some people are, <clears throat> they keep their mind busy always. They worry about their own life, their own health. Others worry about their, the future of their children. Another group is worried about how to fill his stomach all the time, what to eat. Before ending the breakfast, he thinks about lunch, and before ending the lunch, he thinks about dinner. Others probably are worried about their akhirah. So we are always preoccupied with thoughts, different thoughts and different concerns. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wassalam, our sixth imam and the imam of the Muslimin of the school of Ahlul Bayt, he says, a believer, a good believer, a smart believer, an intelligent believer is the one who is always concerned with two main thoughts. And they are not physical thoughts. They are not material ambitions and desires. Two main thoughts have to occupy our brain all the time. We have to think about them day and night. Number one, المؤمن بين مخافتين Number one, ذنب 
Mada la yadri ma sana Allahu ta'ala fi. About our past. About mismanagement of our past. We did not do good during the last 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years of our life. We think about that. We have to contemplate. We have to meditate and think what Allah is going to do with that. It is true that Allah, Allah is Arham al rahimin the most forgiving, the most compassionate, the most merciful. But at the same time, Allah reserves the right for himself to punish us. Imam Zain al abidin says, Ilahi, if you forgive me, then that is not a big wonder because you are Arham al rahimin But if you punish me, you have the right for that. This is your, the system of justice with you. So we have to think about what we did in the past. And we have to learn lessons. Some people say you have to break free with the past. If you want, don't want to be depressed and sad, it is right. With sad occasions, yes, put it behind you. If you have a divorce, if you have a failure, if you have a breakdown, if you have... Put it behind you. Do not let these past painful incidents to haunt you down. But at the same time, we have to learn from the past. We have to learn from our mistakes. If we have committed a sin, major sin, we should not always assume that I... Laylatul Qadr came and I was praying here in the masjid until Fajr so Allah has erased all my sins and my file is crystal clear or clean. We should not assume that. Al-Mu'min ya'ishu bayna al-khawfi wa raja Always a believer has to live. His life revolves among two things. Khawf, fear, anticipation and hope, raja. You cannot always live in fear Neither you can always live that Allah is the most merciful. Whatever I do today and tomorrow, He's going to forgive me. This is wrong. We have to live between these two. So this is one thought. The thought of the past. And how to fix it. How to amend the past. Are we fixing it? Or it is merely a couple of astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, and that's it. No, it's not like that. It's not easy. Sometimes the damage we do to ourselves and to others is beyond repair. Beyond repair. Especially when we do to others. Breaking the heart of others. You cannot fix it in simple coffee or meal. or No, you have to work hard on that. The second, the second thought that has to always preoccupy our mind. وَعُمْرٌ قَدْ بَقِيَ لَا يَدْرِي مَا يَكْسِبُ فيه. For the rest of my life. The first was about the past. The second about the future. What is I am going to do with the rest of my life? Whether it is one year left or ten years. What is I am going to do with that? Is it going to do the same like the old business? Like my past life? Or I am going to be a different person? We have to think about the future. We are getting close to the, the end line in this marathon. Life is a marathon. So, you have to run faster. You don't have enough time for yourself. When we arrive at that last point, no one would allow us to go back. قال ارجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت كلا إنها كلمة هو قائلها هو قائلها Because you are, at the time of death, you are taking off. You cannot change your mind and say, well, get Give me my luggage, I want to leave the aircraft. You can't say this. You are entering a new phase of your life. A hidden, dark, mysterious phase of your life. No one will open the door for you and say, Bismillah, yeah, go back to your wife. We are not allowed. Too late. So we have to think about the future. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna Allah ya'muru bil-adli wal-ihsan. وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات 
إنك ماح السيئات وجاعلها حسنات وعجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة